What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is After Review with Peter and Terrell. I'm your host, Peter, and with me, as always, is my man, Terrell. What's up, T? What's up, Peter? Um, what's going on, man? I mean, not much. Just chilling, chilling. You know, I'm excited. I know you're coming around my neck of the woods here next week. So I nice. am. I'll be there very soon. How was your 4th of July? I saw I saw you had a little fireworks show going on. I did. You know, I blew, we blew up some stuff. You know, it was nice to get out there. Maybe killed some of that Rona with that explosions. Who knows? There you go. <laughs> Hopefully. Did yeah. something. Hopefully with Rona. Yeah. Um, but, uh, that's all great. How about you? I absolutely did nothing. Um, my aunt barbecued, and I sat inside. I watched. I didn't even know what I did. I probably watched some streamer play Call of Duty. Um <laughs> And then I went, I don't even know if I left the house. I might have gone to Sonic. Sonic is like five feet away from my, my house. So I might have gone to Sonic and grab a drink. But wow, that, nice. That's, that's about it. Sounds relaxing at least. God, I miss Sonic. I'm telling you this. I like, I, like, I don't like Sonic's food, but I like their drinks. Let me go to Tangent real quick. I like their drinks and I, I miss it because in Seattle, there's nothing like it. And I was just thinking, you know, like with all this Corona going on, you know, like most of these places have gone like to go drinks, like right to go cocktails. Yeah. Why did why did not Sonic not try to dabble in that in that world? Like they have the the plethora of drinks they already make. I know. Why why not throw a little alcohol? I know like probably because of family environment, like all that type of stuff, which is understandable. But like, imagine like getting like people already mix they like, buy Sonic's drinks and like mix their alcohol in it anyway. Why not just you know you do all the steps for the people? Probably because um, you gotta they you gotta get a alcohol license. And then you have to be people who have to have a license to serve said alcohol. And they, I feel like a lot of high school kids work there, so they can't yeah. even. You have to be eighteen to get your TABC in Texas, at least I know to serve That's that. True. So it's probably a headache, but good headache though like oh, it would like something like i know that'd be great that Wouldn't was that? that's the i mean that was the move when you were as a as a young a i want to say a younger kid. man as a younger yeah. man you roll up the sonic get a slush or something and then just throw a bunch of alcohol in there be like this is my yeah, drink for the night exactly so i don't know i'm sure there's some like some reasons why they don't do that but That'd be they'd be a great move by Sonic. So if anybody from Sonic's listening, I'm hey, I'm giving you free ideas here. <laughs> it's free ideas. All right, let's talk about your boy Pat Mahomes. He's a he's a very wealthy man right now. Very very rich man. Um, five hundred and three million dollars total on this contract. I just, it says twelve years, but I think it's just a ten it's year contract. But ten year extension. extension. Yeah. Ten year extension. Um, the man's getting paid a lot of money. Um, very well worth it. I, my friend Riley texted me, you know Riley, and I said he's worth every penny. Um, although I don't think he will play throughout this whole contract without at least getting some type of extension or restructuring some type of deal. But for the initial starters, this is a great deal for him. Hopefully it also helps the Chiefs. The Chiefs don't get like eye gouged um, with this whole deal. It doesn't seem like that. It doesn't seem that way either. It didn't seem like Mahomes was going to do that anyway. He wasn't trying to gonna rob them for all their money. Because I feel like he knows the the importance of having super not superstars but athletes to throw the ball to as you know he has tons right now so I think he understands that so I'm I'm very happy for Mahomes um, I'm excited that he's gonna be Chiefs quarterback for years and years out um, there's nothing else I can really say about it 477 million guaranteed with you basically in the contract which is comically big. Um, the haters out there are going to say this deal's not worth it. I think it's totally worth it. Also, the numbers set, he's 24 years old. He's won an MVP and a Super Bowl and was basically a coin toss away from probably winning a second S- Super Bowl. So he'd basically be two for two in his two seasons playing. The The deal, the long-term deal makes sense. I mean, 34, he could essentially get paid again at 34 with what he's done also. So it's not bad on him. The Chiefs know what he's going to cost them, so you can work all your co- other contracts through it. I don't think it's that bad because the first four years he's going to be making about forty million a year, and then it's going to be fifty million a year the next five or so. They said after these first two years that he's under the extension for. Um, in a world where Dak Prescott's going to be making like thirty-seven million dollars, that's not you know you're getting a bargain at that point for the talent Mahomes is. I don't. He can make up for the lack of, you know, you're going to lose Tyree Kill probably now. I could see Kelsey staying for a little bit of a discount just to keep winning at his age because he's been yeah, there for, sure. for a while. Well, I, they're not going to have a defense is the problem. 
That's true. We're not using. We're not losing Tyreek for like another two, three years. I think he's on an extension. This. Well, you know, season. you know how wide receivers are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I feel like Tyreek Hill knows his worth. Like he's good, but he isn't like you know. Once he loses his speed. Mm, you know what I mean? I mean, I agree. And trust your team to draft well. I mean, shit. Yeah. If they can just draft well and put players around you, you can let those guys leave, and Mahomes can make up for the lack of veteran, you know, savvy that he's going to have maybe on his weapons with younger guys. Just from a pure arm talent standpoint, it's not like he's going to. The arm is the last thing to go. Barring a catastrophic injury to his legs or his arm. And he can make every throw on the field, so it really doesn't matter who he's throwing to as long as they can catch the ball. Yeah, I mean, and they've shown they can draft well. They just trapped McCole Hardman when they thought they were going to have not have Tyree Kill, and he is going to be well just it's, as good it's his replacement. Tyree. That's exactly yeah, essentially his replacement. So I think they'll be all they'll be all right drafting and figuring it out. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited. Andy Reid. This will probably be his quarterback until he retires, which I'm sure he's he's happy with. Um, yeah, so I think they'll all be okay. I think, like you said, the deal's worth it. And I haven't – the thing is, like, no one, no one's came out and been like – no players came back like, wow, you know, like, really, like, this is what we're paying players now. Like, I haven't seen any of that. It's all been, like, great support for my home. So it makes you seem – it makes you show that, like, everyone else – feels the same way about well it. a they know that might be getting passed down the line to them the more yeah, a contract looks sure. like it's better for everybody in the league when you have contracts but i know a lot of chiefs players came out and x players said like this is every penny well spent on this guy yeah. and i i agree name a bad quarter name a bad quarterback deal that you don't think is really worth it i mean russell wilson's the highest paid quarterback in the nfl they win because of Russell Wilson up in Seattle. They, I mean, Rodgers. Someone would say Rodgers, but I mean, they kind of they've won some. They games yeah, but they also didn't draft an offensive player for Rodgers ever. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, yeah, you're right. There's there's been times where you know I I've like only the really bad quarterbacks that people have missed. It's like this is a bad deal. Um, but like when you know you got a guy, I think you go ahead and pay him, you lock him up because I feel like. If you don't have the queue sometimes, it's so hard to do things. Like, look at the Chicago Bears. Like, <laughs> last, I mean, two years ago, they probably could have went to the Super Bowl if they had a, a you know, a, any a sort of decent quarterback, quarterback yeah. with that def- – the way the defense was playing, the defense was just out of their mind, turning the For ball sure, over yeah. and scoring. Hey, it was a 40 chess move by the Bears. They didn't – they passed on Mahomes so they wouldn't have to pay him $400 million. Yes, <laughs> so. I guess so. <laughs> oh, they got to be sick. I would be sick if I was them. Yeah. Where where does Deshaun Watson? Because that's all. That's this is all. this this definitely screws with his contract. Because Desha- you think so? Yes, it screws with the Dak contract and it screws with the Watson contract. Because uh, Dak wants the gar- the years and Watson's gonna want the money. Is the whole and point. Watson the only? I guess I mean obviously Mahomes has won a Super Bowl in MVP, but like. Watson, I mean, looking like, no, yeah, oranges to oranges, like, he isn't too far off from making that type of money, in my opinion, at least. He's not going to make, you know, this ridiculous amount of money, but he isn't too far off from getting that type of money, if you ask me. The problem is, is he hasn't won exponentially more games than what Bill O'Brien won without him. So Bill O'Brien won, like, three divisions without Watson, and he's won two with Watson, Watson's won one playoff game. He's one and sure. one, I think. So that's his argument. But then Watson's going to say, well, you trade away my entire goddamn team and I got nobody around me, it feels like. You're going to yeah. pay pay my ass. I yeah, Quarterback numbers are getting ridiculous. So they're going to – he's going to make – I think Watson's going to make like $40 million a year on his deal. Which, hey, he very well should deserve. Um, Does, that's my. It, it, it's a weird. It is a weird argument because yeah. I just said quarterback deals are worth it, but there. It yeah. comes to a point where it's like you now you're hindering like the people like your team. This comes to a point like you got. It's a thin line between like you're worth it and then like okay you're yeah. too much. What's the risk reward? What's the trade off between your talent and the talent you can't acquire via spending money or keeping in your locker room with guys? But if you're good, if you're an organization that drafts well, these contracts are so easy to do. Yeah, if you if you find some studs to plug and play, 
you you find you, your Debo Samuel or McCall, McCall Harmon, you know, year one, the guys who can just come in and play and different things like that. Or like, um, what's the guy up in Seattle? I'm totally blanking on his name right now. Uh, oh, DK Metcalf? DK Metcalf. You find guys like that come in year one and make splashes, you don't need to have the studs. You know, those guys can come in and play, and then you just fill it in with, you know, you always you always have a veteran, veteran around just because, like, that's how the cookie, cookie crumbles. But, you know, if you could find, you know, guys like that, you play them on, you know, a, you know the rookie contract, and then you can make some moves there. So, and, I mean, I would kill to have for my team to have a quarterback like Mahomes right now because I know how well we draft. Like, that's why I'm okay with the Kirk Cousins deal because we draft pretty well, so we're maybe not going to be able to keep everybody, but we keep – you know, churning over a new young talent, it's a little bit different when you can't draft an offensive line. So that's a whole different issue we have in Minnesota. But if you yeah. can just keep a decent offensive line to keep Mahomes healthy and running and you keep drafting well on the skill positions, it's no problem. It's easy. It's easy. It's it's supposedly it should be easy, but you know somehow it's not as easy as it seems, right? <sighs> yeah, it, it doesn't really hurt. Time. It hurts you. I did hear this thing. It was really interesting because someone was talking about like, oh, what about the Carson Wentz contract right now? It looks bad because he's injury prone and stuff like that. But the Eagles make $15 million for every home game they have, especially, and then they make uh, double that for a playoff home game. So $30 million. And Carson Wentz single-handedly got them to a home playoff game last year. So he essentially yeah. made them 30. They He made his contract yearly pay for one game for getting you to the playoffs. So look at it like that from a business standpoint. Yeah, it, it's it's ridiculous at times. But because I, I was always a, a person, I know, I think we talked about this when Russell got paid. And I was like, is it really worth paying Russell all this money if you can't have any people around him? And then Russell, like you said, he goes out and he wins those games. So yeah, it is worth it. But like, at times, at the beginning, it's like, eh, should well, we pay him, should we not? It's not Russell's fault that Pete Carroll can't dra- and John Snyder can't draft at all in the first round. They've been horrible with their first-round picks yeah. in, they, throughout they Russell's like, career. They, they take, like, they go find, like, some bottom of the barrel. Like, no offense to the guys who've drafted. Like, they try to, like, find these, like, these diamonds in a rough type of guys. I'm like, no, just... Take the look at the mock draft and take a guy on the board that we all know go, about. Yeah, go find a diamond in the rough in the third, fourth, fifth round, not yeah, the first exactly. round. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, um uh, hats off to the Chiefs and Britt Veach, Andy Reid, and Mahomes are getting this together, figuring this out. Now it's time to work on uh, Chris Jones because you cannot do this massive deal and then not show any love to Chris Jones. I don't know what that situation is like, but you've got to. That's got to be your next task. It sure. doesn't sound great, but I'm it's gonna ask I'm gonna ask you the million dollar question for Mahomes. Over under one and a half more Super Bowls for Mahomes. More? Yeah. One and a half one. over under. So we're not counting the one you Not counting has. the first one. That's the number in Vegas right now. One and a half more Super Bowls. Man, I'm gonna go under. You're gonna go under. Do you so do you think do you think he gets one more? I think he gets one more, but I don't think he gets two more. Okay. I mean, I would love for him to get two more. I think it's it's so tough. It man. is. I watched it. It's it's t- like those those years of when Brady went like just went every. I think those years are done. Those like those I I mean I just think those years are done of them of like the Patriots dynasty of just going back to back years like all like like that and like even the Patriots had a ton of luck when they won those. I mm-hmm. just think. But, you know, yeah. people doing that or those the time is just done. And so. and the big number is from two to one to two because it, one you can get lucky, two is not a fluke. Yeah. So think about I, all the quarterbacks. I mean, Breeze only has one. Rogers only has one. Russell only has one currently. Yeah. So I would love if Mahomes got to three. I think if him to three is like solidified, like. That's true. And people have to yeah. take the franchise into context. The Chiefs have been to one had been to one Super Bowl in fifty years. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think he definitely gets another one, but the third one is going to be tough. Maybe maybe I think he gets one and takes like it's like a it's a lull time because I think he has a good chance of going back to back this year just with like everything that's going on and, and them bringing back everybody and not having to like you know really kind of teach new people things. Um, so. From that standpoint, but I think after that, it's going to be tough. He probably, I think he definitely gets hot. He could get hot one year and bring a bad team to the Super Bowl, for sure. 
But I agree, there's too many good, there's a lot of great quarterbacks, a lot of good teams. So I'll leave with this one last thing before we go on to the next thing. Mahomes has only, has lost every game in the NFL by seven points or less. And the only person to ever come back against Mahomes is Tom Brady. So that's a good little, good little, uh, nod for those facts there so you're ever essentially in every game by one touchdown and nobody comes back against him except for the goat that's true and he had tom brady beat uh <laughs> he did he was winning with a minute he, left twice d ford's freaking freaking <laughs> hand i gosh <laughs> oh my god uh, it's all right uh, you got one that's, and that's <laughs> what exactly what i mean is like the patriots have been so lucky like mm. things like that people would say well that's the chief spot but like come on like how often does that really happen um so anyways let's not let's not go down the rabbit hole all right yeah let's go um do we want to talk baseball schedule coming out let's hop on a baseball schedule um your yankees are opening up with the defending world champions july 23rd uh, thursday night it's my dad's birthday he's very excited nice hopefully he doesn't get uh you know, up, not, I wouldn't say upset his birthday, but, you know, birthday yeah. is, you know, the damper. L- little disappointment. Hey, man. A little disappointment. I don't know. I love it. Every game, 60 games, oh, I'm so hyped. Everything, it's going to feel like baseball, playoff baseball the entire time. And playoff baseball yeah. is absolutely the best. You can't argue no, that. You can't, really. And, you know, it's the little teams like my Royals, they might have a chance here. <laughs> Probably not. They but, could. But like, hey. We're in it. They could get hot. They could get hot. That's you, what I'm saying. You don't even have to get hot. I mean, you just have to play well. Yeah. The last, and then you get hot. Yeah, you get hot the last two weeks of the season, and you play good enough to stay afloat. Yeah, exactly. So don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. Yeah. Keeps everybody in. I do like what it. What else? Uh, Mike, I mean, there are – baseball players are starting to drop out, though, because they just did their first round of testing, and there was a bunch. Of, there was 19 teams, I think, that had a positive test on that. Well, I feel like that's good. You get the first round, and like from there, you you get those people under control. I know Joey Gala is one of the ones from the Rangers because it was the news on the news was on at my house because yeah. aunt, aunt and uncle love the news, so um that, that was on. <laughs> I figured that out, but like yeah, I think I think it's I, I don't know, I don't I haven't got it, so it's it's, it's much different for me to say oh yeah it'll be fine, but like I feel like in these players in this sort of circumstances like they have the best doctors, you know, they have the best trainers. Or whatever, or quote unquote, they have the best ones. So like, you know, you get quarantine, you get right, because most of the time, most of these guys are probably asymptomatic. They're probably fine. There has, I, I mean, there it. has been some because uh, my boy Freddie Freeman tested positive down in Atlanta, and Nick Marquez has just backed out for the Braves because he said he talked oh, to Freeman and how Freeman's doing with his, you know, with the oh, symptoms wow. and everything. So exactly good. Yeah, I mean, it's a thing. It's definitely, no, it's a, definitely thing. a thing. But. So. I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak because it, it sucks. It's like they they did all this planning. They did like all this like, all this precautionary, and guys are just dropping out left and right. Which I I totally understand. Your health is like they they said baseball didn't do a great job with the healthy part of it. They were just arguing games with their with everything. They didn't do yeah. a great job about the precautions. <laughs> they're they're traveling still. Essentially, they're the only team, only organization who's not doing a bubble, which I see is. I don't know. I don't know why they're not doing a bubble, honestly. Why they're not doing a bubble? Um, They said they want their families to be. They want to, It's too much to be away from their families, and it's easier to keep the team self-contained instead of just this large area. They said they looked into it. They looked into doing, like, the spring training bubbles, like Atlanta – or not Atlanta, Arizona and Florida. But I guess – I don't know. I mean – I. Yeah. I'm so – so this is my whole thing. I'm so confused about it all. It's because if the NBA can say, hey, we're going to bring families in after round one, I know, like, I guess there's less NBA teams at that point. I understand that. But, like, why couldn't the, you know, NBL figure mm-hmm. out a way to bring family else? I don't families. know. Maybe it's just easier for them not to deal with that, not dealing with Fair having enough. to test all these people. I mean, it's going to be – they're playing 60 games in 63 days. So they're just figuring two months, get it over with. Yeah. This is it. Deal with it. Right. So if you're at home, are you allowed to go home to your family then? Or are you still like secluded to like a hotel in your home city? I don't. But your family can visit you there? I don't know. I think I think you can stay at home with your family at home because they, they have the expanded roster. So you can kind of hide a guy they said that's sick. 
and they run in test constantly on everybody because the tests are so widely available they said you could only be out you may only be out three days because you could test positive then test get two negative tests in or be two negative tests in 48 hours and then symptom free for 72 hours so basically you could test be asymptomatic and then get two negatives right away and then be back within three to three to four days so they're not even on like the nba where you test positive you're out for two weeks yeah uh that's wild okay i just i don't see it being like i i'm totally on board with, like going to see your family like that's like, very important i just don't see it being safe of you doing like your day-to-day like oh How? i'm gonna go home yeah i'm out, out i don't also don't want to lock lock these guys up like they have a life still i guess i don't know but like they have a life or whatever but like that's true that but basically but think about how much you're on the road in baseball. Anyway, That's true. and you're doing a lot less of that. That's what I'm saying. If it's if it's two months, you're like, hey, let's knock this out. Like, I I don't want to say, hey, I you know you go two months without seeing your kid. Like, I don't want to speak for anybody who plays baseball. But like, if it's two months, why not play in these bubbles and just it's, just hammer it out? And then you know you get kicked out. You know if you don't if you don't make the playoffs, you're back home with your family. If you do make the playoffs, a little longer, obviously, but. I don't know. It just seems more safe if we were to do a bubble and all, if it's only for two week, two months. I, I agree because some people aren't. I'm sure there's protocols I got to follow, but people aren't going to follow it and their teams are going to get sick. I know Mike Trout like, already well, said he doesn't want to play. And that question's like, how, do you really, how much do you, some guys play baseball because they're good at it and other guys do it because they love the game. Because Mike Trout was like, really, I don't really want to play. He's the highest paid baseball player and he's apprehensive about playing because he thinks it's dangerous and he knows his kid's going to be his first kid's going to be born so he doesn't want to do anything with that it's like come on dude it's your job you know what's you know what the deal is i i don't know i've kind of another way on that i feel like the whole kid is like he doesn't want to bring it home to his wife who's probably pregnant like that situation i think like mike Charles is probably better off just like you know i'm sure he has a huge place he's like go sleep in the guest house somewhere like you know what i mean yeah like, like but you don't want to have to go sleep in a guest house away from your pregnant wife like for two months i think it's more of that situation than like and like is it he he's probably like is this 60 games worth he doesn't he put my, my, like my i said obviously i i question now his passion for the game at this point i would question it if he's like this apprehensive about it playing i know nobody on the yankees is worried about this there everybody's there everybody's at camp ecstatic i know just happy to be back and playing and that's I, what i want to see out of my team i know but like i i see i see what you're saying but also see the, the mike trout side just because like being precautionary you're like trying to keep your family safe you know you don't want to have to be like oh well i can't i can't what well, he's like I, you can't see your baby you've tested positive for covid you know because you were playing baseball not not say like not to dismiss you know say baseball's like this like not doesn't matter but like if it's sixty games, like you'll I will, play next year, I right? will give him a little thing because he's getting paid pennies on the dollar what he normally makes to play. You yeah. know, it's they're getting prorated contracts for the sixty games, so he's not making his twelve year four hundred thirty million dollar contract that he signed last yeah. year. So I get so, it. It's I don't just, know. It's- it just line it feels like there's a I don't know he's not a gamer you lose a little bit of that gamer in him which has been kind of a knock sometimes I feel like a Mike Trout that he doesn't put himself out there as, something like eighty percent of people don't know who Mike Trout is and he's the best baseball player by a large margin currently in baseball. Yeah, I know I I see both sides. Is there's in this situation there's no perfect way to go about it. Honestly, I think. There's no, like, you know, I feel like every organization is trying to do their best. Maybe. Maybe they're trying to do their best, or maybe they're just trying to get support. Maybe they're just trying to, the owners are trying to make money. I don't really know. But I feel like I would hope they would want to do their best and, like, you know, power through. They're do- I feel like they're doing a good job and just hammering out these 60 games in 63 days. I don't know how they're going to do the traveling. Now, that sounds Well, ridiculous. it's all, I mean, it's all local. I mean, most, you can just take a bus to most places, at least yeah. out, at least on the East Coast. Because yeah. you're playing AL, you know, AL East and AL East are playing each other, so it's really not difficult to not, you know, just stay on a bus, be secure. And they all have private planes anyway. No, I know, I know all that. I'm just saying, like, are you are you flying then landing then playing? Well, they're probably playing six games. They might be playing. I haven't looked. 
are they playing three game sets still, or are they playing six game sets? Yeah, I mean then the the Yankees and the Nationals will put in three game sets, and they see like the Dodgers and Astros only play two games. I mean, so beats me. I would have to do some deep dive to see if they're playing two. See what they're sets. yeah. I would expect some maybe some longer series I mean, with each other. I see some short series. Here. Well, yeah, short. Sh- two games. You do short series with out of your division, and then in your division, you're playing maybe longer like, series. Like Yankees, Red Sox might play four or five in a row. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. They they have it all worked out. No, no, you're right. You're right. So the longer series are within your division. Like I see Astros, Rangers play four games, and then yeah. So yeah, you're probably right. And so, Mets, Nationals are playing four games or so. Yeah. So that makes it a little bit easier to manage. You know, if you just lock them yeah, up for four sure. days in a hotel or whatever. It just it does it does play an issue because all states are all over the place on what's going on and what, how open some states are compared to other states and what the infection rate is, you know. Totally, I just it's just I don't know. It's like some states are safer to go to and not, and some are not. But like you got to hope that they're doing all the precautionary things to keep you safe. I think you know. I guess you land, take the bus, the bus straight to the hotel. You stay in a hotel until you got to play. I guess. Yeah, or, and you take the bus. The you take the bus right goes. to the stadium for workouts. Yeah, I don't. Even, yeah, I don't even know how the food situation goes. Like, they're sleeping in the stadium. They're sleeping in the stadium. Actually, in the stadium. Are you getting like food brought to you? Like, like are you like ordering like like a hey like they've already picked your food. You're gonna go do. I would. I wouldn't assume you can go to like you would be going to restaurants. I just like assume you get eating in your room. It's um, all yeah, basically all catered maybe or something all pre. Done kind of like how football does it in mean, college football at least. Everyone's got the they got the pre order food and you show up, you get this ready to go. That's gonna get tired. That's gonna get exhausted. But I guess these guys are used to it. But these guys are probably used to be able to go go out like, after a dinner. game. Go out, yeah. and get out a nice dinner. And then I'm sure they're. I, I guess maybe they'll like shut the whole take a hotel to themselves. Maybe that 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 that'll probably be okay, right? Um, the hotel. For baseball, I mean, I seem like being pretty safe, and that way you can like. Yeah, least... but is it feasible for a whole hotel to just? I don't know. What's the hotel industry look like right now with people staying in hotels? I have no idea. Probably not very high. So I guess that could be done. They'll be like, oh hell yeah, it's pretty packed. Because I drove, obviously me and yeah. my sister drove back from Seattle, and like we stayed in one in Amarillo, and it was like it wasn't packed, but the parking lot was pretty deep. I don't know if what was going on there or not, but it was like it's also Texas. So. Yeah, Texas. Uh, yeah, but, we're we're a little bit of an issue right here in Texas. Yeah, but it was pretty. It was pretty like you know I wasn't running into people left and right, but I could tell there was a lot of people there. So I I, I don't know what the hotel situation is like, but these guys are standing. You know the hotel I'm staying at. These guys are staying like in the, the Ritz Carlton or whatever. Yeah, so. the the top of the no, they're all staying in a Motel Six. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so they're staying at the creme de la creme of hotels. Whatever, or would it make sense to be like get an Airbnb for these guys? I don't. Know. I don't. I don't know. That's a good question. Cool, Especially, well, I no, they can't because the rosters are so big now. They got too many guys. That's true. So That's ho- true. They, own they hotel. Wouldn't be able to find a, yeah. Own hotel. Own like yeah, the rosters are big. They're they're taking over a whole hotel. I think would so. Would you say hey, every team uses this These, hotel that yes. comes to the city? Yeah, that's what I would do. This is the visiting team's hotel every time. The problem is. I guess you have to be over the top with sterilizing and cleaning because you don't want one team to have sick guys start coughing on everything and getting ne- the next team in sick. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's you don't true. Want- you really- yeah, I would assume, like, I'm sure, like, there's a whole deal with the same thing in NBA. Is like, are the hotel workers expected to essentially stay at the hotel too? Like, is it, like, one of those things? Because they're, I, in the bubble, I know they're trying to make that happen, but it's kind of tough. Yeah, they won't even let the writers um, leave. They said. Yeah, which I it makes sense though. Like, you you're doing interviews, you're close enough with the players. You gotta stay in this bubble with me because I don't want you going out. You know, you know, but you I, might hit the strip club out or whatever. <laughs> but I come back with something. But I bet they're not even that close for these interviews. I bet you they're like Zoom interviews too. On top of it, it already seems yeah. like they're not even that close. It's almost not worth it. You're probably right, but it's also it might be worth it. Like I would, like me, like well, if they asked us to do the pod, yeah, hell yeah, we're we're, there, we're like, biting that bullet for we're, three we're, months. We're down there, we're, we're in there for three months. We're in there, like no, like yeah. So like, why don't rice? We're in there. So, we're we're staying in this, this side shitty hotel, but uh, we're getting in. You know, we're getting no, daily we're episodes. The no, but the we're bubble the has. They hotel. said the no, the bubble has some shitty hotels that they're putting the media in. Oh, that's fine. I don't care. Yeah, we're, we're, get- ta- we're talking about. 
prime basketball, mm-hmm. like we're probably up close and personal too. Getting we're gonna we're, hear some shit. We're getting daily interviews with people. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. I can all see kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm all about it. There's still guys dropping out. I mean, Victor Oladipo just dropped out this week, and Bradley Beal just dropped out this week. So Spencer did with me dropped out because he got another another positive test on Monday. Rip. Um. Yeah, that's sad. Let's see. Yeah, but I we haven't seen any of our big stars drop out yet. Um. I know it's coming. It's coming. It's it's unfortunately it's probably gonna happen. You no, know, you know, I don't want to say it, but like LeBron might get it. AD, Greek freak. James Harden, I don't like, there's there's plenty of guys out there, Joel and Bead, like our big name guys, one one of them's gonna probably gonna get it and then I think that is where it's all gonna shift. I mean, I don't see anybody well, no one's technically dropped out because of no big names dropped out because of COVID concerns. It's been Old Depot was his quad and Bradley Beal was his shoulder. They don't wanna they're not playing for much and they don't want to risk re injury. Dwight said he's coming which was smart. Yeah. Dwight did the whole thing that we talked about using his platform because he said he's donating every game check to his uh, foundation. I can't uh, something I can't breathe or something like that. Yeah, I can't breathe. That's yeah. it. So he's donating all of his checks, and now he has his platform to push. Perfect. That's how we thought you should do it um, with this stuff. I Joel Embiid worries me because he's – I don't want to call him an idiot, but he's he's not the brightest, you know – star in the bunch he's he's not bright sometimes he does some doofus stuff so i could see him you know breaking the bubble or something stupid like that and catching it and i'll be like oh god because i i swear the sixers are not getting talked about enough by some big people but there's definitely a little bit of buzz that okay they're a hundred percent healthy now Uh uh-oh what are we gonna see out of them yeah, I'm excited. You know, I love Ben Simmons. He said he's feeling better than he did at the start of the start of the season. So, I am pretty excited to see what the Sixers are going to do. I don't. So, if you had to bet, you were talking big name. What? Who's the first big name that drops out because of their they get it twice too long, or they say, "Ah, oh, this isn't worth it." Being in the bubble, uh, man. The first big name. Yeah, who would, would you have, see it, that be, could do it? It'd have to be a team who. Not necessarily like has a, a super duper chance of winning. Like I could see like would Dame Lillard count as one because he essentially is a big name, but his team is probably not getting a chance of. I don't think he winning. drops out because they're gonna have a shot at the playoffs. He he'll take his risk, and if they don't get in the playoffs, it's over quick enough. But I think once you get down to the bubble, you're like you might as well just ride through. It. You know, go through it right. <laughs> could you see Kawhi? You know could I mean? you see? Yes. Could you see Kawhi just saying like, "No, nah, I'm done." <laughs> oh wait, actually, maybe. <laughs> it's just such a Kawhi. That'd be such a Kawhi move. Just be like, "No, nah, I don't want to play basketball right now." Yeah, I can see Kawhi actually. Yeah, now you say that, I can see Kawhi doing it. Um, <sighs> He's such a rubble. Yeah, Kawhi. I guess I can see Kawhi doing it. Um, I can see uh, Donovan Mitchell doing it. He's a pretty big name. I would well, say. he already got it though. Yeah, you already got it. So that's what I'm saying. I can see him like I ain't trying to say this again. He might be okay. He might not get it. I don't yeah, know. I don't know if I don't you can get it. I don't know if you can. Get, I don't think you can get it again. It's very up in the air. It seems like you may not be able to get it again. Yeah. So I don't know. I yeah. I, I don't think Bron. I don't think I'm not counting. LeBron Bron James now. is the. You would have to drag LeBron's cold dead body off the court for him not to be I'm playing. Not, I'm not counting out the Greek freak. Uh, James Harden. I'm. I feel like he would hoop. Russell, I feel like he would hoop. Uh, James Harden would get his ass beat by Russell if he quit on him. Yeah, I, I just, I feel like most of these guys are like if they ain't said it now. No, Ky- they, Kyrie they the would be the man. Kyrie was the guy that would be out. That's a superstar. I see Jimmy Butler doing it, saying, "Hey, nah, it's okay." Um, ah, uh, I'm the other way. I heard Jimmy Butler was pissed that the guys weren't working out as hard as he was. Yeah, that's true. Jimmy's that's true. kind of a crazy Jimmy person. Loves, Jimmy loves to work out and hoop. Yeah, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry, Jimmy. If you ever end up yeah, listening to this. yeah, if he listens um, to this, he's gonna come get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I guess Kawhi might be it, just because Kawhi's like, uh, it's not worth it, because you know he's he's big on not getting injured. So. He's a he's a different cat, Kawhi. He, he yep. marches to his own drum beat. So I could definitely see Kawhi being that guy. Um, let's see. Do we want to talk about a uh, Deshaun Jackson stepping it a little bit yesterday on social media? I so obviously I don't have not obviously yeah. I don't have social media so I didn't see this but I we can talk about it and you can you can take the rings and I'll try to see if I can read I, about it. I'm a just bit. I'm gonna keep it simple. Deshaun Jackson posted a quote from Hitler yesterday, 
and it had some anti-Semitic stuff on there. And then he went back and said, no, 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 I wasn't talking about the anti-Semitic stuff. And it, and I just go, dude, you just quoted Hitler. Come on, man. That, stop right there. You shouldn't be posting quotes from Hitler on social media. It's not a good look. Uh, and the team owner and GM are Jewish. Yeah, uh, it's a bad. I heard they're trying to get out of his con, his guarantees to get rid of him. I don't, I don't blame them. They need receivers though, so they, they should. They uh, do. I guess I, I, but you know, if you if you're the owner and the GM and you're Jewish and you posted something like that, you're probably like, screw you. I don't yeah. care if I need receivers. Yeah, that bad. Fuck, yeah, fuck <laughs> this. I got so much money. This is bullshit. <laughs> I need to see. A, there's been some pushback. I need to see more pushback, like Drew Brees got with his stupid flag comments that he made, because it's the exact same bullshit. You know, it's just guys I, being I, stupid. I know, and I I said this earlier to you, and I was like, people expect good things out of Drew Brees, and no <laughs> offense to Sean Jackson, but people are like, eh, you know, he ain't the brightest, you know, you know, bunch in the. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's, I guess I, yeah. I guess that people are like, yeah, yeah, I could expect this from him, and most like I think the biggest thing is that people would expect this from Drew Brees because he holds like such a a high standard in you know in the sports world, and Deshaun Jackson is like. Yeah. He's a knucklehead. Not, yeah, people already know him as a knucklehead. knucklehead. I mean, yeah, his, we don't. We're not hundred percent. We're not. We're not too surprised that he said something like. That. I mean, he's you know the right. he's the originator of dropping the football at the one yard line when he's scoring. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> stuff like that. So, people are like, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I do want to touch on this. People it's, are been calling for. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. People have been calling for Jerry Jones to say something. When do you think he will say something? I don't know. And will this turn upside down if he doesn't say something? Soon? It's it's getting bad on Jerry to say something because everyone keeps calling him out and he won't say anything. Jerry's kind of coming off like the old, you know, the old man upstairs that's not really in touch with anything that's going on. He just it's his way or the highway at this point. Yeah, and- you got black players, dude. You got to. Uh, I think he's more stuff. he's more worried about the Dak Prescott contract than anything. Well, that's his excuse, and you better come out and say that. But, um, yeah, it's not looking great. It's not looking it's, great at all. Uh, Jerry probably. Yeah, uh, maybe Jerry's getting ready to retire. You know, pass it on. I think Jerry Jerry would die in his owner's box before he retires. Oh, that's what we didn't talk about. Thank you for bringing this up. We didn't talk about the Redskins changing their name. Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, you, we, you, we I, talked about, we texted about this a yes. little bit. But um, supposedly, obviously, Trump backed it up and said the Redskins name is fine. <laughs> oh, t- t- okay. Can we talk about this Trump tweet? This might be the funniest tweet I've ever. Our president is a goddamn comedian. Hate, love him or hate him for his politics, he's hilarious. And uh, oh my god, the tweet he posted about the Redskins and Indians was maybe the funniest thing I've ever read. It was so good. Let me see. I'm trying to pull up this. Oh, okay, yeah, this tweet. He tweeted, they named teams out of strength, not weakness, but now the Washington Redskins and Cleveland Indians, two fabled sports franchises, look like they're going to be changing their names in order to be politically correct. Indians, like Elizabeth Warren, must be angry right now. I oh, I died so hard. Oh, my gosh. He, he, he has no filter. He's so yeah, bad. He's biggest, it's hilarious. Biggest troll of them all. He is. But, yeah, we could talk about Redskins is where I – he's right about the Indians. Redskins is a racial slur. We should change the name. Yeah, definitely should change the name. I'm, I'm sure they're working on it. I don't know what they're going to come up with. Are they, do they change the colors? Are they allowed to change the colors? Um, you're allowed to do whatever to change. I mean, the Titans were original. I mean, the Titans were the Oilers, and they changed their colors. They were the Tennessee Oilers. They were the Tennessee Maybe. Oilers with those old colors for two years, I think. So – I could see yeah, it. I, the fans don't want I that, love, though. That's true. I loved your take on it. Was like, just change it to the Warriors. Um, I'd like to see, because I, I know last time we had a name change, it was the Thunder, and people did not like that at all. But it, it grew on us, and now it's fine. Um, so we'll see. I don't know what they'll do. I don't know how long it's going to take. There's, I, I, I We talked about Dan Snyder. I thought Dan Snyder would sell the team before he changed the name. But it seems like he's cracking. Yeah, I feel like yeah he well if one people one big people like FedEx starts pulling out and Nike takes your stuff off the off the market you you got to do something you can't be you can't be big and bold and, and be stubborn and then you got your hands kind of pushed in a certain way I I know I saw the three minority owners are looking to sell their te- sell their stake in the team right now because they're disgruntled with him and then Ron Rivera was all over it he's like let's change it for this year we can get it done beforehand. 
Yeah, for sure. I don't. I don't know what the process is. I don't know what's finding the right name. I mean, if you're sure you could hire plenty of marketing people, marketing people to figure out what's a good name to do. There was um, my dad had an interesting take. I didn't. It didn't. I didn't like it, but it kind of has grown on me. And he said, just change your name. Change the name to the Americans. You know, like the Nash Washington Nationals. You got the Washington Americans, and you can keep the logo and everything. Cause they're just Americans. There you go. Uh, it's not I the like Reds. That. You know, they're just you know Native Americans. There you go. And I'm like, oh, so you can literally roll off the tongue, though. It yeah, doesn't. That's the only thing. Is. The war. I don't. I don't hate that. Yeah, the Washington Warriors were good. You got to keep the colors because I know the fans are super attached to the burgundy and yellow. Okay, that's fine. You can keep the colors. Whatever. Cool. I know. Cool. I I know. I did the video. Shout out to our channel, the daily video, talking about a bunch of name changes. The Red Tails. That was an interesting one. I like the Washington. How about the Washington Monuments? <laughs> Wait, I feel like is it? There's an old name for some team, right? I, I think so. it's it just sounds like it, right? It rolls off the tongue. I feel like it's a name for a team, though. Maybe minor uh, league. I mean, there is the Washington Monument. No, yeah, but um, maybe, 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 maybe that's a um, uh, maybe that's a oh, it's a name of a company. Oh, oh is it the Warriors' old name or like the um? Not the Warriors, the Wizards. No, they were the Bullets. No, I know the uh, the Washington oh, General. The Washington right. Generals offered to sell their name. You know, the team that plays the Gold Trotters. They offered to sell the name to the Redskins in the NFL to change ah. it to that. But it was like, do you really want to be known as the team that always loses to the Globe Trotters? Yeah. No, that's the the monument is the name of a group that owns um, like a the stadium, not the stadium or something like that. But it's already a name kind of used already oh, around there. So there you go. But yeah, I just yeah, I couldn't believe we didn't touch on that. So it's getting it's getting changed. I know you said someone's got to loan us five billion dollars so we can run the team. Yeah, please. If anyone's out there that wants to loan us five million billion, I mean, to run this team, we uh we got it. We would love to do it. I know. Um, we... Pete said he'd want to be the owner. I would want to at least be somebody in, in the, in the chain C- of CEO, president, CEO. president of operations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, president of operations. I, so. he I, said, I like how deep our yeah. conversation got into that, though. <laughs> like, we're into it. So you were like, you were like, we let Dwayne Haskins go, and I said, no, we ain't gonna let him go yet because I, I want to take for Lawrence. I want Trevor. You want to take for Lawrence? I said, well, this is a good way to figure out if we want Haskins or not. We play him, and if he just tanks us himself, just being bad, <laughs> then we obviously let him go. But if he like is good. I think we keep him and then we go go somewhere else with it. I can't have him get us to six and ten and seven and nine. That gets us nothing. It get, it shows that he can maybe kind of play, not really, and we have no good draft pick. <laughs> yeah, I mean that you're not wrong, but then at least we know we don't have to draft. We don't have to waste on another quarterback draft. We draft. You know uh, what I'm saying? Uh, but I did like you said we keeping Ron Rivera. I'm a, I like that. Oh yeah, River, keeping Riverboat Ron, and we're we're gonna go get some cool OC. We're gonna go find some college guy. He's Alex bring, Smith's our him. quarterbacks coach. Alex Smith's our quarterbacks coach. Obviously, you saw what he kind of did with Pat Mahomes. We can take it, leave it. However, you want to look at that. Um, we're gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna go get some. Who we want to go get as an OC? <sighs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Who's the OC right now in Washington? Um, is it is it one of the? It's those the guy who they already had there. They kept that guy. Um, I don't know his name. He's a younger guy though. He's actually pretty pretty good. I think. I don't know. So you might keep him there though. But I want I want to find some cool guy who's up and coming, you know. Some young hip offense guy. out there. Yeah, offense, and I want to get an old grouchy defensive coordinator. So, um, yeah, so that's that's how I want to go about. It. We'll we'll come up next week. We'll who we want as the OC in our DC. Yeah, we we'll, just we'll need that, that five billion dollar loan. Five billion dollar loan. We'll rename the team. We'll do it all. We'll we'll do whatever. FedEx will be back in our pockets. And then everything. Maybe we should get the five billion dollar billion dollar loan from FedEx. I don't know if they're worth. Is FedEx worth five billion dollars? Probably. I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if That's they want to commit it. to that though. Do you think they've they... already committed so much money? Yeah, um... but do they trust us? <laughs> yeah, do they, they, they trust us? Is a real question. They should. They should listen to the pod and they'll trust us. Yeah, that's. Um, oh God. They are worth fifty-five billion dollars. All right, that's a small chunk. We we can make that five billion dollar investment back. Yeah, they can just own the team, and then we'll just be like the the what the what they call the it? The opposite. Yeah, we just like yeah. uh, we run the team. We're the we're the exactly. guys out there. 
so I think that's cool. We'll come back next week with our OCDC picks, and then we'll we'll debate on how we feel about Haskins or not. All right. Uh, let's I'm see. still optimistic. It's only had one year. Gotta give him two years. Okay, but I don't want to miss out on maybe the greatest quarterback generational generational well, always, talent. We always could possibly trade up. You we can, we can, I can't we can trade away all my picks. I can't be well, trading away all my picks like that. You're killing me. I need picks. Well, if 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 Haskins shows a little worth, then we can trade him for with picks. I'm yeah, saying. maybe. I think it's just dumb for us to be like, oh, let's just throw with this, like, this talented quarterback here like, who just need. We just need somebody to teach him how to read everything. Okay, his well, arm, arm, arm isn't the ta- problem. No, I wish he would have stayed at Ohio State another year to get a little well, older because he could, is young. He is young. We could treat it like another year at Ohio State for him, and we could just you know mm. bring him up. I don't know. I'm just. Saying, I'm trying to sell you on Haskins. I, I know. I, I know. know you really like Lawrence. You like really like Lawrence. You like. You like you also the guy probably that like, wants the Maserati and stuff too, huh? No, hey man, hold on. I just <laughs> I know when I see a talent, you sold me on it. Remember, I needed to be sold on Lawrence after he won the Natty two years ago. You're right. And he You're sold right. me on him this. He sold himself to me this year. Because you, you know, I like I like Fields better than Lawrence. Though. I that, that's a dumb statement to make right there. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. It's also the guy at North Dakota State. So we gotta really. Gotta I get do like him. I do like the guy at North Dakota State. I watched him. I know you throw. don't like Justin Fields. This, this is where we're gonna differ. In, hey, in I, hey, man. All, Lawrence. Play. The Lawrence stat. Only stat I need is Lawrence has played in four playoff games. He's got eight touchdowns, zero picks. He ran into a buzzsaw this year against LSU in the Natty. No, I, it's totally okay. Yeah, it's understandable. But he still played good too. Yeah. Um. I, I I like both of them, but if 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 we were to just like you know, we, we <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're gonna have to get in a room and really evaluate these guys. We're gonna need and, some. You know, I'm gonna we're gonna need some interviews with these guys. Okay, interviews because the guy at North Dakota State might just wow us all. That's true. I, I do thing. like I do like him. He's got a massive arm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's undefeated, and he doesn't throw interceptions either. It's it's so. a it's very easy to go undefeated in North Dakota though. I know, but like he's well, he's also playing uh, Oregon this year, so we gotta we gotta we gotta watch that game. That's a big sure. time. That's gonna be his draft that's stock. Uh, that's gonna be that's his gonna game be, for everybody. That's gonna be like worth three games for him. Yeah, so hopefully he plays well. that's fair. Okay, let's see. Um, oh yeah, Fight Island this weekend, UFC 251. In hey, Abu, well, in Abu who's, Dhabi. Who's, who's fighting? Who's fighting? Uh, um, let's see. I had that car. One of the somebody just bowed out because I tested positive. It was supposed. It is a pretty good card. Oh, this is a good one. I saw the I saw the promo for this video. Yeah, this is gonna be good stuff. Yeah. Uh, the main event. It's uh Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal. That's a good fight. Should we watch this together. We should. You're gonna All have right. to pass. You're gonna have to pass a test, but that's okay. Do you have to pass the Corona test? <laughs> you have Corona test to give out. Yeah, maybe I'll find one. Jose Aldo and Jan, Peter Jan, Bantaweight, and then the women fighting. I always like the women fighting. Those girls make me feel very emasculated. That's great. Let's order some pluckers and uh, do that. Okay. I like that idea. All right. I'm fine. We could do that. Do a little hangout. All right. I think that's going to do it for us this week. Um, anything else? Stay safe. All right, everybody stay safe. Uh, Remember to like and share the video, and we'll see you all next week.